So what they can do is they can give you a function defined as an integral, but notice one of the limits is a variable. And notice that the variable is different from the variable in the integral. And they do that on purpose, okay? You cannot use the same variable as uh, a limit and as your variable that's being integrated, okay? So we will look at some problems where we're supposed to set these kind of things up. Um, and you've got to remember that you, you need to have two separate variables, okay? So they say evaluate this function at x equals 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Now, it sounds like a whole lot of work, but we're going to start to see a pattern here in a second. So big F of 0. That means we're going to integrate from 0 to 0 of cosine of t dt. Now, properties of integrals. What's the value of that? Zero. If your limits are the same, you are accumulating no area. So the value of that integral is zero. Now, next one, not so lucky. Okay, uh, f of pi over 6 is the integral from 0 to pi over 6 of the cosine of t dt. So to figure this out, we need to anti-differentiate cosine. We just did it a second ago. It is sine. We're going to evaluate it from 0 to pi over 6. So the sine of pi over 6 minus the sine of 0. Oops, not theta, 0. I love theta so with my big functions, apparently. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. The sine of 0 is 0. So that is 1 half. Let's do f of pi over 4. So that's the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the cosine of t dt. The antiderivative of the cosine is sine. We're evaluating that from 0 to pi over 4. So we plug in pi over 4 minus the sine of 0. Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 0 is 0. So this answer is the square root of 2 over 2. So what you should be noticing is every single time we are subtracting the sine of 0, which is 0. So really, the way that we can look at this is that f of x is equal to the sine of x minus 0, okay, um, which I'll write it here because that value is not always 0, but in this case it is 0. Um, so if we want to know f of pi over 3, instead of writing out all that stuff, I know that it's just the sine of pi over 3, which is the square root of 3 over 2. And f of pi over 2 is simply the sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Let's look at this next example the same way. We're not going to go through that long process every single time. We're going to look at this from the perspective of, well, um, f of x is equal to the antiderivative of uh, 3t squared is t cubed. The antiderivative of negative 2t is minus t squared. The antiderivative of 4 is 4t. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to x. So that is x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus, oh, we're putting 0 for all those t's, it's 0. So f of 1 is simply 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 4 times 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 4 times 1 is 4. Two, 2 cubed minus 2 squared plus 4 times 2, that's 8 minus 4 plus 8, 8 minus 4 is 4, 4 plus 8 is 12. F of 3, 
3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 4 times 3. 3 cubed is 27. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 27 minus 9 is 18. 18 plus 12 is 30. And finally, f of 4. 4 cubed minus 4 squared plus 4 times 4. 4 cubed 64 minus 4 squared 16 plus 16. That is 63. Okay. Now, how we can check this is uh, we can use our calculators. Obviously, your integrate option is easier than the graphing option, okay, but I don't have the integrate option on this calculator. I wish I had a virtual version of your calculator, but I do not. I need to look into that, actually. Um, but uh, there's your y, there, there's your function, okay? So what we're trying to evaluate is the area under the curve between 0 and whatever value. So I can check it by doing from 0 to 1. That should give me 4. It does. And I can check 2. It's from 0 to 2. It should give me 12. I'm just adding a little bit more area every single time. Okay, 3 is from 0 to 3. Okay, 30 and... 4 is the area under the curve from 0 to 4. 64. Okay. So, honestly, they like to put these questions on there because they look funky and weird, but it's, it really could not be more simple. Okay. Uh, you're just plugging in that number for x, anti differentiating, and evaluating the function. Okay. Um, they really like to do these with graphs. Okay, they really like to do this with graphs, um, and you'll you actually have one of these problems. Look at number 75 real quick. 75 and 76 are the same kind of idea. Okay, they say that g of x equal the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So they give you the graph of f, so your g of x is the area under the curve from 0 to whatever value they ask you of the picture you're looking at, okay? So they're just asking you to do it graphically as opposed to doing it algebraically. But it's the exact same idea. So g of 0 is the integral from 0 to 0 of f of t. Well, we know that's 0, okay? g of 2 is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t, so that's the area under the curve from 0 to 2 of the graph you're looking at. Okay, the area under the curve of the graph you're looking at from 0 to 2, 0 to 4, 0 to 6, 0 to 8. Okay, and they are asking you to estimate. There is a little bit of curve to some of those pieces, but just estimate it. Okay, use triangles, trapezoids, whatever you want to use uh, to figure out those um, areas. And then it asks you about extrema of G. Okay, so think about it this way. If g is the integral of f, then how could we think about the relationship between g and f using derivatives? g is the integral of f, and g is the integral of f, so how can we think about the relationship in terms of derivatives? F is the derivative of G. Okay, if you took the derivative of each side, G prime, the, der the derivative of the integral is just a function. Okay, so you've got to think about it that way. If it asks about extrema of G, you've got to connect, okay, extrema, i got to think about the derivative, okay, so g prime, the derivative of g is f, okay, um, so think about it that way. I will show you guys try and do problems 69 through 76.